To help us compare the positive and negative predictive value, we are going to imagine that a group of people are being tested for a condition. These white squares represent individuals without it, and the red squares represent individuals with it. This yellow line represents a cutoff level for a test. To the left of the line, the test returns negative, and to the right, it returns positive. Since the positive predictive value only takes into consideration positive tests, we are going to focus on the squares to the right of the yellow line. Now let's take a moment to look at the sample table in the top right corner. When calculating the positive predictive value, we only need to use the top row. This row is used for people who tested positive. In the left box, we have the true positives. In the middle box, the false positives. And on the right, the total number of positive tests. Counting the squares, we find that there are 32 true positives, 11 false positives, and 43 positive tests in total. Now all that's left to do is enter the data into the equation. In doing so, we find that the positive predictive value is 32 over 43, which is 74%. Now let's calculate the negative predictive value. Since it only takes into consideration negative tests, we are going to focus on the squares to the left of the yellow line. When calculating the negative predictive value, we only need to use the bottom row. This row is used for people who test the negative. In the left box, we have the false negatives. In the middle box, the true negatives and on the right the total number of negative tests. Counting the squares, we find that there is a single false negative, 100 true negatives, and 101 negative tests in total. All that's left to do is enter the data into the equation. In doing so, we find that the negative predictive value is 100 over 101, which is 99%. Now let's directly compare the positive and the negative predictive value in this cohort of patients. At the current cutoff level for a positive test, the negative predictive value is 97%, and the positive predictive value is 79%. If we were to change the threshold for a positive test, then we would simultaneously change the positive and negative predictive values. By shifting the threshold to the left, we can obtain a 100% negative predictive value. So with this test, the condition will definitely be absent if a person has a negative test. The positive predictive value, however, has dropped to 73%, meaning that for every 100 people who test positive, 27 people will actually not have the condition. So although the test is accurately excluding the condition in people who test negative, it is incorrectly identifying the condition in people who test positive. If instead we shift the threshold for a positive test to the right, we can obtain a 100% positive predictive value. So with this test, the condition will definitely be present if a person has a positive test. The negative predictive value, however, has dropped to 79%, meaning that for every 100 people who test negative, 21 will actually have the condition. So although the test is accurately identifying the condition in people who test positive, it is incorrectly excluding the condition in people who test negative. Now let's return the cutoff level for a positive test back to the middle so that we can see what happens when the amount of overlap between the two groups changes. As the amount of overlap increases, the number of false positives and false negatives increase too. Expectedly, this results in a lower positive and negative predictive value. And conversely, if there was less overlap, then both the positive and negative predictive value of the test would be higher. Now let's reset the amount of overlap so that we can visualize the effect that changes in prevalence has on both values. As the prevalence increases, the positive predictive value goes up, but the negative predictive value goes down. This makes sense, because the more people that have a condition, the more likely a positive test is going to be true. As the prevalence decreases, the negative predictive value goes up, but the positive predictive value goes down. This makes sense, because the less people that have a condition, the more likely a negative test is going to be true. So as we visualize in these animations, the predictive value can be affected by the cutoff level for a positive test, the amount of overlap between two groups, and the prevalence of the condition.